Hi everybody, let's in this video look at the money market in more detail and specifically understand where interest rates come from in the money market. Remember what the money market is. It's where financial assets are bought and sold with IOUs of less than or equal to a year or maturities of a year or less. So for example, governed bonds with maturities of a year or less will be bought and sold in the money market. For example, any interbank lending between commercial banks will take place in the money market. For example, any borrowing needs from the central bank by commercial banks to fulfill their liquidity needs will take place in the money market. These are all money market transactions because they're short-term financial assets with IOUs of a year or less. I've drawn a money market here, where on the y-axis we've got the price of money, which is the interest rate, and on the x-axis we have the quantity of money. The demand curve for money is downward sloping to reflect an inverse relationship between the interest rate and the demand for money, and the quantity demanded for money. Why is that? Well, at lower interest rates, it makes more sense to hold cash uh, because interest rates on less liquid financial assets are very low, right? In which case, holding cash is not really going to hold you back at all. There's no real reason to hold less liquid assets. Holding cash is fair enough, increasing the demand for money. Whereas when interest rates are higher, it makes less sense for you to hold cash liquid forms of money. Why? Because you could be uh, investing your money in an asset, a less liquid asset, which is giving you a much higher rate of return. So at higher interest rates, it makes less sense for you to hold money. At lower interest rates, it makes more sense to hold money, explaining the relationship between the interest rate and the demand for money there. The supply of money curve is vertical because the central bank controls it. It's fixed by the central bank at one quantity value. Uh, we know that the central banks control the money supply which is why we draw a vertical independent of the interest rate. Where the supply of money curve intersects the demand for money curve, we get the equilibrium interest rate in the money market. So where the supply of money curve 1 hits the demand curve for money, we get an equilibrium interest rate of I1 and an equilibrium quantity of money, which we know is fixed by the central bank, at Q1. So how can interest rates change in the money market? Well, the demand for money can shift, I'm sure you're thinking. Yes, that is true, but more dominating than that is changes in the supply of money, which is fixed by the central bank. The central bank can alter the supply of money and thus change interest rates, and that effect will always dominate changes in the demand for money. In that sense, the interest rate can be altered purely by the central bank. That's how they set monetary policy in order to meet their inflation target, right? So what tools are available to central banks whereby they can change the supply of money and therefore change interest rates? Well, we're going to look at three. The reserve requirement, which is the amount of money that commercial banks need to keep in the Bank of England by law. That doesn't yet exist in the UK economy. That's not regulated, whereas in the US it is. The discount rate can change, or the repo rate, or the bank rate as it's called in the UK. That is the rate at which commercial banks borrow from the Bank of England in order to meet their liquidity needs, short term. And you've got open market operations, the buying and selling of government bonds. So let's look at the reserve requirement. How on earth can the central bank alter the money supply by altering the reserve requirement? Well, if they wanted to reduce interest rates, what they could do is reduce the reserve requirement. That means that commercial banks don't need to keep as much money in the Bank of England. This is not yet regulated in the UK. This is all theoretical at the moment. In the US, though, there is a requirement of how much money commercial banks must keep in the central bank. But in the UK, in theory, let's say, by reducing the reserve requirement, commercial banks don't need to keep as much money in the Bank of England. They can keep more of it in the real economy themselves, increasing the money supply and thus reducing interest rates in the money market. Vice versa, the Bank of England could increase the reserve requirement, forcing commercial banks to keep more of their money in the Bank of England, sucking money out of the real economy, reducing the money supply and increasing interest rates. What could happen to the discount rate or the bank rate as it's more commonly known in the UK? Well, this one is used a lot by the central bank. This is the dominant way of the Bank of England altering interest rates in the money market uh, in order to meet their inflation targets. Well, remember what the bank rate is. It's the rate at which commercial banks need to borrow from the Bank of England. And this is a big, big deal. Because on a daily basis, commercial banks will borrow from the Bank of England to meet their liquidity needs, right? If they don't do that, they can borrow from each other. They can borrow in the interbank. Uh, market, but borrowing from the Bank of England is a big source of short-term finance if banks need it for liquidity purposes. So if the Bank of England decided to reduce the bank rate, the repo rate or the discount rate, it means that borrowing from the Bank of England is cheaper, which means there is less money being sucked out of the economy, which is increasing the money supply and thus reducing interest rates. 
Whereas if that bank rate increased, more money is being sucked out of the economy than before, which is reducing the money supply and increasing interest rates as a result of that. So changes in the bank rate is a big way in which interest rates can change in the money market. And that is the dominant way that the Bank of England will alter the money supply and set interest rates in the money market. Now, the central bank can also engage in open market operations. This is the dominant way of changing interest rates in the US. The Federal Reserve will engage in the buying and selling of bonds in order to change the money supply and change the interest rate. So, if the central bank wanted to reduce interest rates, they would need to increase the money supply. And the way that we do that is to buy bonds. Is to buy bonds. When the central bank buys bonds, they're replacing paper with cash, increasing the money supply out there, reducing the interest rate out there. Whereas if the central bank is selling loads of bonds, then let's say commercial banks who are sitting on loads of cash and are replacing that cash with paper, that is taking money out of the money market, out of the economy, thus reducing the supply of the money curve and increasing interest rates. So that explains to you what the money market is all about and where interest rates come from in the money market, very much set by central banks looking to meet their inflation targets. Yes, the demand curve for money can, can shift and that can alter interest rates, but that's a theoretical idea. In reality, the supply curve of money dominates because of the control the central bank has over it. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Hopefully now you understand the money market and where interest rates come from in the money market, also known as short-term interest rates for this exact reason. I'll see you all in the next video.